Hello all my young filmmakers out there. My name is Danny Gebertz and today we have a special day because we're talking about how I build out my cinema camera. So let's get into it. So many of you who have been following me know that my weapon of choice these days is the Canon C200. I use this camera for pretty much 90% of my shoots. It's a beast, even though Canon's starting to release newer and newer cameras. This one's only about two years old and it's still just uh, worth purchasing in my personal opinion if you're gonna buy a cinema camera. So I will say that the equipment that we're gonna use today is not specifically just designed for the Canon C200. If you don't have a C200, you can use the equipment today to build out your own cinema camera. You don't need to have this one specifically. It's pretty much universal equipment. One super important thing that I need you all to realize as you're watching this video is that all the equipment that I'm adding to my cinema camera is not really affecting the image that is being produced by the cinema camera. This is not stuff that you absolutely need. It's just stuff that's gonna help you throughout the process of filmmaking, make it easier for you while you're shooting. And it makes the camera look a little cooler. So let's be honest, that's the real reason why I paid all this money to soup up my Canon C200. On my Canon C200, I pretty much have the base accessories that come with it. The hand grip, which is super comfortable. This is one of my favorite hand grips. Even if I rent an Ari Alexa Mini, I'll attach this hand grip to the side of it and just tuck away the wire. Got a great top handle. This LCD monitor is awesome. It's super flexible. You know, it works perfectly great. There's no need to really have another monitor, even though I'm gonna add one. So first thing I wanna do, let's add the lens. The lens I use for so many projects is the Sigma 24-70 f2.8. And the reason I use this is because it is so versatile. Most of the stuff I'm doing is run and gun, documentary, or you know, corporate shoots that don't really require, you know, prime lenses for the most part. Now if I do have a bigger project, I'll rent, you know, prime lenses, but for the most part, this is what I'm shooting every day with. Now the next thing that we're gonna add to our little setup here is our base plate. And this base plate specifically is from Small Rig. It's a 1740 base plate. It's relatively affordable as far as base plates goes. I think it's like 70 bucks, which is, I know not super affordable, but again, we're wasting money here, guys. So what we're gonna do is thread this onto the bottom of our C200. There we have it, we have our base plate on there. The next thing we're gonna do is add these 15 millimeter carbon fiber rods. This is a set of 12 inches and they are also from Small Rig. I think these are relatively cheaper. I think they come in at about $17. And what we're gonna do with these is slide them into our base plate slot right here. So if you don't understand the reasoning for what these rods do, what they essentially do is allow you to add on accessories to your camera package in the front, whether it's a follow focus or a matte box, and on the back, maybe, you know, a battery pack. Speaking of battery, the next thing I wanna do is add the gold mount battery adapter for my camera. So this piece right here is actually three separate components, all from wooden camera. So right here, what we have is the battery slide, the gold mount adapter screwed onto it, and the rod clamps that are screwed onto everything. And this piece right here, you're looking at is not cheap at all. It's like $550. And again, here to waste money to look cool. So this bad boy is gonna slide on to the back of our camera. I like to have it kind of towards the back a little more. Just wanna give myself some space so I can get into the SD slots, you know, control whatever I need to on the back of the camera. Cool, now that that is clamped onto the rods, what I'm gonna do here is plug this into the DC in port at the bottom here. And this is gonna give our camera power and a lot of power. So you don't have to necessarily just rely on the little tiny Canon battery. Next thing we're gonna do is add the gold mount battery. And this is a big heavy brick. It's a Dionic Anton Bauer 90 watt gold mount battery. So what this is gonna do is just slide right on here to the back of the camera and it clicks in just like that. And I think it's important to quickly say why I chose gold mount versus V mount batteries. I chose gold mount batteries because I've had experiences over time where you know, I've had a V-mount battery tucked into my armpit and my shoulder actually pushed the battery out in the middle of filming and I just felt like it was just like less reliable than gold mount batteries. So I went with gold mount and I've never had an experience where they've slid out on me. So one of these gold mounts is gonna run you about $450 and I have two of them so you do the math. I'm sure you can find cheaper options out there but I wanted a brand name that I could trust, especially when it comes to batteries. I wanted to make sure they could last long, 
have a long life span. Um, yeah, just a trustworthy battery because I don't want my camera just shutting off on me or buying a cheaper battery and having to replace it every now and then. So if you thought the batteries were expensive, the, the charger is also very expensive. I think the charger was like, check my notes, it was $700. So you're probably thinking to yourself, Danny, why are you wasting your money on all this stuff to make your camera not perform any better? And you know, I ask myself the same question every day. Great, so moving on, next thing I wanna talk about is my monitor. And this is actually the most recent purchase that I've made for my camera package. And this is a small HD 702 bright monitor, the all black limited edition, because why would I get anything that's not limited edition, you know? Like I want there to be limits on the edition and I'm buying. Duh. So the reason I actually went out and pulled the plug on this monitor is because it's been running like 50% off for the past couple of weeks. And something that is originally like a $1,600 monitor is only $800 on like B&H and Amazon. I mean, I think now that's because people are buying the 703. This is a 702 older monitor, works just the same, works perfectly fine. So I will say of everything that I've purchased here, this is probably the most useful purchase that I made for my camera package. Even though this LCD screen that comes with the Canon is really awesome and a great articulating screen, the one thing that that kills me over and over again is I'm missing super sharp focus because it's so hard to see on that little monitor. So having this big monitor right in your face, super bright, even in daylight, I can see that I'm sharp and focused. And it's helped a ton with you know things like seeing what's actually in the shot, what's not in the shot. So yeah, I would recommend getting a big ass monitor like this. I'm not sure if it's still on sale, but yeah, it's worth it. To me at least, I don't know about you. So the thing I use to mount this monitor to my camera is this articulating arm right here. I'm gonna read it. This is the Axler AA7 Ricotto articulating arm, seven inches, uh, $34.95. So not super pricey. It holds up strong. It doesn't drift on me. It's affordable. I really appreciate this articulating arm to hold my, my monitor. So I would recommend. So what I'm gonna do is thread this on top of my camera top handle right here. Now that that's in there, all I have to do is Loosen the knob here and this thing flexes in so many different positions. Now I like to have my monitor just directly up front, right in front of my face. Thread my monitor here on top. And there she is, right on top. So there's two ways to actually power the monitor. What you can do is take Sony batteries and put them in one slot, or you can take the little Canon LP batteries and put them in the other. So what I do to power is I have a dummy battery for the Sony slot. This is actually made by Small HD. It was like $35. And what I do is you slide it in here. Cord is kind of long, so I usually loop it around the top handle. So this dummy battery is gonna connect via D-tap and on my gold mount battery slider, there's actually a D-tap port that I can plug this into. So I'm actually drawing power from my gold mount battery. Now, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get feedback from the camera to the monitor. And we do that with a BNC cable. This is a $12, 24 inch BNC cable from Small HD. And this is gonna connect via SDI ports. So what I'm gonna do is plug one side into the SDI in on the monitor because we want the, the image to go into this monitor. And that's gonna swoop this around so our Port doesn't get tangled up. I'm gonna plug it directly into this SDI port. And yeah, now we have an image. So yeah, we're done. This is my cinema camera package. Now, if I was gonna have a bigger shoot and I was going to use my Canon C200, if there wasn't money to rent, you know, Alexa Mini or something, what I would do is if we had prime lenses rented, maybe put a matte box on the front of this put a follow focus on the front of this. There's so many different things that you can do, but for most you know, videos that I'm filming, a lot of running gun stuff, a lot of documentary stuff, you know, a lot of you know, stuff that doesn't need you know, the big production team, this is what my cinema package is gonna look like. And if you're looking at this thinking, Danny, you wasted a ton of money, like just shoot with the camera body itself. Well, you're probably right, but there's three reasons really why I spent all this money on this. One, you're really actually getting a little bit more functionality out of the camera, longer battery life. I can actually see what I'm shooting with this 
giant ass monitor in my face. I had a matte box, we'd be sliding in filters or a follow focus, someone could pull focus for me. You know, there's a lot of actual functionality that can come from building out your package. The second thing, you know, client perception. Like, you look more legit with a build-out camera than if it wasn't built out. That's just plain and simple. And the third thing, another main functionality that I haven't talked about is a lot of these running gun type situations, I'm shooting a lot of things handheld, and to get better, smoother handheld, you gotta add weight to your camera package. The more weight, the less small micro jitters that you're gonna see out of your footage. But adding all these accessories to my camera, better believe that it's making it very heavy and it's very well balanced. See, if I hold this in the middle of my camera, see how balanced that camera is? Feels great, it just fits firmly, just like right in there. Look at that, it's like a baby. At the end of the day, for some of you, it might not be worth it to spend all this money to build out your camera, but for someone like me, I'm shooting a ton, I'm getting a lot of use out of all the extra little functions, and it has been worth it for me. I make jokes that I've wasted my money, but I really haven't. I'm very happy with my build out as it is today. Does anyone notice that I'm not wearing a hat today? Very, very rare amount of these YouTube videos where I'm not wearing a hat. So this is, if this is your first Danny Gavert's YouTube video and you see I'm not wearing a hat, this is, this is not normal. This is, this is different. I just got out of the shower and I felt like I was having a good hair day. So kind of stuck with it, you know? Well, so what I'm gonna do is add all the links to everything on my cinema camera package below in my description, so if you are interested in buying those things, go ahead and buy them. They're probably gonna be Amazon links just so I can make a buck or two off of it. All right, so today's end of the video tip is how to fake pull yourself without someone actually pulling you. If you are a young filmmaker, I hope this channel helps you. Go ahead and watch a few more videos on my channel and hopefully that you can learn some more comment some questions concerns that you might have at least some suggestions for videos that you want to see me make for you to learn in the future so yeah i love you so much i'm sure there'll be some more videos that i'll pop up for you to watch so yeah bye <laughs> running low on battery everywhere